Good evening, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Friday, September 19, 2014, around 8.15 in the evening in Bellarica, Massachusetts. It's dark out now, going to be another frosty night, but we're going to rebound this weekend to be temperatures in the close to 70 tomorrow, and Sunday we could reach over 80. What a way for summer to go out in this area. Some news to report. The Columbus Blue Jackets have announced that their forward Nathan Horton will be out indefinitely with a back injury. Tough break for Nathan. I think he could be an injury-prone player for his entire rest of his NHL career. And WHDH TV in Boston has announced they're going to have a new meteorologist. Her name is Britt Eggers, and Britt will be starting in the weekends on WHDH TV. In October, she's the first female meteorologist since Dylan Dryer in 2012. I bet Britt has great legs. <laughs> and that's about it on that. My third and final video subject of the night is my personality profile. And it's about Larry Bird. Larry Bird is a legendary basketball player who played for the Boston Celtics for 13 seasons. From 1979 to 1992, he was number 33. He was one of the prominent names who brought the NBA back from almost being folded in the late 70s. Larry Bird was born in Indiana. He grew up in a town called French Lick, Indiana, which had only a population of 2,100 people. He played basketball in, in, Indi in high school for Springs Valley, and he was so good for that, he got a scholarship to Indiana University. And he was recruited by legendary coach Bobby Knight. And Larry Bird went to Indiana University in the fall of 1974. But he only lasted a month there because of the student population was overwhelming for him. Because he was a small town guy in French Lick, Indiana. And he couldn't take it being overwhelmed. So he dropped out. That ended his chance to play in the Indiana basketball team and then he signed up for a community college and he worked for the town of uh, Flint Slick Kentucky I mean Indiana in the track like picking up trash and stuff in 1975 he transferred to Indiana State University but he had to sit out a year because he was a transfer student and he like played for three years for the Indiana State basketball team the Sycamores he averaged over 30.3 points a game 15.3 rebounds a game and 4.6 assists per game he was he was a great basketball player in college the Celtics drafted him with the sixth overall pick in the 1978 NBA draft but he went back to college to play a senior year and which was a good move because the Indiana State University had an undefeated season that year. He was the 1979 NCAA College Basketball Player of the Year. The Indiana State Sycamores made it to the final game of the 1979 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. They played against the Michigan State University, the Michigan State Spartans, and on that team was Magic Johnson. It was the first time that Bird and Magic would play one-on-one -on -one in a game, and Michigan State won the game by the score of 75-64, and this was the first of many games that Bird and Magic would play. Soon afterwards, Larry Bird signed a contract with the Celtics, and his 13-year career started with, with the Celtics in the NBA. Celtics had a bad season the year before in 1979, and, but when Bird came along in 1980, they went from worst to first. He won the Rookie of the Year in 1980, and he made the first of nine straight All-NBA First Team postseason teams. He also played in 12 All-Star Games. He led the Celtics to three World Championships in 1981, 84, and 86. Two times he won the NBA Finals MVP. Three times he was the league's most valuable player. Back to back to back. 1984, 1985, 1986. He also like was made the NBA's All Defensive Team second team twice. He wasn't. He won three straight NBA. 
NBA three-point long-distance shootout championships at the NBA's All-Star Game and was pretty good at that. And he also was on, he was one of the cornerstones for the Celtics along with Kevin McKellen, Robert Parrish. They were the big three. They were the first big three. The Celtics were a very, very great team during the big three era. They always would win the Atlantic Division title most years. They would go deep in the playoffs. They would usually face the Lakers in the NBA Finals and Magic Johnson. And sometimes Bird would win and sometimes Magic would win in the NBA Finals. But it was very good that both of these marquee names were in the NBA at a time where the NBA was almost they were almost non-existent in the sports world but these two these two players brought the NBA back to prominence and they started for the NBA to be a brand name when these two players played and Bud was doing good into 1988 that's when he started to have injuries he missed most of 1988-89 season with both of his Achilles heels were shot, blew out both of them. He had to get surgery done. He only played six games. Celtics barely made the playoffs that year, but they got bounced in the first round. And then Bird had a, kind of a good year, 1989-1990, but 1990-91 and 91-92, and he missed a significant amount of time with a back injury that prematurely ended his career, not, but not before being on the 1992 US and USA men's basketball team, Olympic team, which he pl played. He announced his retirement in August 18, 1992. After 13 years, he had a career scoring average of 24.3 points per game, 10 rebounds per game exactly, and 6.3 assists per game. Larry Bird holds the record for most points scored in a Scouts Celtics game with 60 points back in 1985 against the Atlanta Hawks in a game in New Orleans. And he was a clutch performer. Celtics immediately retired as number 33, hanging up in the Raptors. They had a special night at the Boston Garden, February 4th, 1993. They had no game. They had a lot of old Celtics players, camera players, and Magic Johnson. The event was hosted by NBC Sports. Top dog Bob Costas, and at the end, Magic was joking. Well, something in Friends Forever. <laughs> he he kind of, Larry kind of ripped up, kind of like pulled his shirt. And actually, Magic Johnson had a Celtics t shirt. Pretty funny. For five years, Larry Bird was part of the Celtics front office, but he didn't get any good position of power with the team. He was, that wasn't very great. And when Rick Pitino was named coach of the Celtics in May of 1997, Bird was basically gone, and he became the coach of the Indiana Pacers. He was a coach for the Indiana Pacers for three years, winning, winning 147 games, 67 losses. He was 1998 NBA Coach of the Year, and he led the Indiana Pacers to the 2000 NBA Finals, which had got bounced in six games by the Los Angeles Lakers. Larry Bird retired from coaching, and then he spent a couple of years gone from the NBA. There was rumors that he was going to be a part of an ownership group to buy the Boston Celtics around 2002 or so, but that never came to be, which kind of that was disappointing because I thought to myself, Bird's kind of a Celtics figure for life, and Somehow he would be getting a part of the Celtics, but never came to be. And in 2003, Larry Bird went back to the Indiana Pacers as the direct president of, of basketball operations. He's been there ever since, except for a couple of years where he took a took some time off because of health reasons and stuff. But he's back. He's the only NBA per, and the only person in NBA history to win Rookie of the Year MVP three NBA championships, NBA Finals MVP, um, Coach of the Year, and Executive of the Year. Larry Bird was a first ballot Hall of Famer in 1998, and every time he would look up on the rafters, every, every Celtics game, he would look up to number four, Bobby Orr, who was a legendary defenseman for the Boston Bruins. He would always look up that every time at game time when the National Anthem was being played. And in 1992, Larry Bird 
Bobby Orr and Ted Williams had a special sports final interview with Bob Lobel on WBZ TV. TV. It was a classic interview, one of the best done ever. And Larry Bird's probably one of the top five greatest Celtics players of all time. He's probably one of the, he was named one of the 50th greatest players of all time. And probably he, him and Magic, Magic Johnson will go down in the record books as probably the two men who saved the NBA from probably being a non-factor and being folded in the late 1970s. And that's about it on that subject. I'll be back tomorrow, Facebook friends and YouTube followers, for at least three to six more video blogs. Subjects going to be covered tomorrow will be the top 10 greatest NWA WCW World Tag Team Championships, the 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 game show classic concentration and my personality profile tomorrow is going to be Michael Felger and that and look for future video blogs in the coming days weeks months years millenniums infinity about the top 10 greatest WWE tag team champions of all time the preview of the 2014 2015 new mass low men's hockey team Julie Broughton, Local News 6, weather, weather Meteorologist, and Heidi Pratt, and Janelle Tobin, and Dee Patel, and Crystal Pistol, and other stuff. And coming October 1st will be the 2014-2015 NHL blog preview. And see you later, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. Good night, everybody.